see you all. Um, how, Jerry Casale, can you believe it? Yeah! He's like the architect. And um, when I got to play with Devo, it was amazing working with him. Uh, I got to see a little bit from the inside of how they came up with their songs. Uh, he was talking about Alan Myers. Uh, I got to learn a little bit about how they came up with those beats and everything. Um, uh, Jocko Homo is supposed to sound like a one-armed robot. That's what was explained to me. Um, anyway, it's great to see you. Um, I just wanted to say uh, I love Devo. You know I love Devo so much. And uh, Halloween uh, 1981, I went to go see Devo at Radio City Music Hall. Um, and it's so crazy because that was for the New Traditionalist Tour 40 years ago. So I'm not, I've been a Devo fan for 40 years. Quick Q&A, and um, I'm so happy to see all of you. Am I a DJ? I'm a DJ. Come on right up. Come on right up. All right. He's just getting back to another one. Wow. All right, Mr. Armisen, I got a question for you. I've yes. I've heard an enemy since I watched for Landia. <laughs> <laughs> How high were you whenever that idea came about? <laughs> that's that's uh, nice of you to say. Um, but, you know, me and Carrie, when we came up with those ideas, we just, uh, we were pretty not high. Uh, we were just, uh, it, it, it came from our insane minds. And, and I will say that um, a lot of the way we thought, a lot of the way we like to take photos was very much of the tradition of Devo. Too, because we did it in a certain way. We posed in a way that had like a Devo feel to it. So, yeah. Hey, Fred. Um, top three songs that you would cover of Devo. Top three songs I would cover of Devo. Okay, now uh, I'm gonna think about this for a second. Doctor Detroit. Yeah. Because um, I want to. I would want to do. I would try to do a version of Gates of Steel. It's such a, such a great song. I'm trying to think of a good deep cut. Turnaround. Yeah. Every time Turnaround comes on, I'm like, why didn't I hear this song more? Like, I wish they played it live. It's such a, such a great, great. Oh, that's right. Nirvana covered it. Well, there you go. It's, it's been covered. My thought was not original. All right. Hey, Fred. Hi. My name is Adam. I play in the band Devo Maddox, who's playing here later on tonight. Oh, great, great. As a big Devo fan, I always wanted to be in a Devo, a Devo tribute, and I, when I started playing it, I found that those songs were incredibly hard to play. Oh, what instrument are you? What? What instrument do you I'm play? the drummer. Oh, yeah. So, when, when you got the call to play with Devo, did you really have to do your homework, or did you just know it by memory? Both. So, I knew those songs that were just like in my bones. Just. Uh -uh. That's how I learned how to play drums, is listening to Alan Meyer's parts. Yes. With all those Tom fills in it. Not fills, they were part of the beat. On the other hand, I had to do my homework as far as playing a full show all the way through. Going from song to song. As opposed to when you're at home, you do Girl You Want, you know, three times in a row. The switching right into the next song and then into Under Control Lurch. So, um, those songs are in incredibly hard to play. There's no jamming. There's no like groovy fill. Or, like, kind of, it's very like this, 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 this. You're working all the way through. Odd timing once in a while. Weird little parts. And so when I practiced with them, I was like really proud of myself. Like, hey, I, you know, I did. And they didn't react because to them it was normal. So I was like giving myself a pat on the back. They're like, yeah, we know our songs. Good job, thanks. I mean, it was all very, you know, based on Alan Myers, and, and you know, the way we tuned the drums was like how Alan Myers tuned them. But the way I found out that I was playing that show is, I was texting with Mark, and yes, I'm name dropping. And I had tickets to go see them at Burger Google Lou, so I was like, I was going to go see them. And he's like, Do you want to take the Devo challenge? And I was like, I thought he meant, Do you want to do a contest? 
Will you play it one depot song? I was like, yeah, I'll do that. That sounds fun. And during the messages, I was like, well, I think he wants me to play a whole show. <laughs> so it turned from, from happiness to total, total elation. I was so excited. And the thing that was great about being on stage was, see, I forgot that all the fans dress like all you guys do, or like we do. So it was so awesome to see the hats and everything, and people on different costumes. It was just incredible. Yes, hello. Hi, um, I was just curious. Um, how did you get involved in playing um, Cranky Kong in the new Mario movie? That was like a simple thing of just asking to do it. You know, like they just asked me and I was like, absolutely. And uh, uh, I play Seth Rogen's dad, you know, and, uh, and uh, it seemed like fun and, and it was totally fun. So it was like, that was like a simple transaction. Like, do you want to do it? I was like, absolutely. So, Fred, I just wanted to mention, uh, when we communicate, it's usually about Devo, strictly. Yes. And uh, you've shown me things from your childhood that you still have. Yes. And I wanted you to just maybe tell people about that. Uh, yeah, so I was in Club Devo in 1981. I still have my little, little card. Uh, I got a tour book. I didn't bring it with me, but like I bought it at the show. And it was at a time, you know, like where I was like, oh my god, what can I afford? I, I, I guess I'll get this tour book. And then I got pictures, and it was, I got a little pin, and, uh, and I still have it all. I still have it. I somehow, in all the places I've moved to in my whole life, I've held on to all my Devo stuff, which is crazy. I've lost so much stuff. Shout out pictures. I also have iron ons, like the more traditionalist iron on. Uh, but not, but I haven't ironed on anything. It's still, it's still ready to go. So, all that stuff that what he's wearing. Yeah. yeah. Fred, I yes. saw you on the Vote for Change tour. I think it was 1992 with Yola Tango. Okay. You did a Prince thing. Yeah, but was that later? I mean, later than 92. Uh, whatever Al Gore was running for. Yeah, yeah, so that, uh, like, like, maybe ten years or so later, but yes, I do remember it. Um, and you sat in with Gilbert Tango and it was absolutely mesmerizing. Thank you, yeah. But, do you think it would be a different world now if Al Gore would have won that election? Oh. Wow, we'll never know. We'll never know. That's an interesting question. I, I no longer, things are so, get so insane that I no longer can predict what would have been right or wrong. I'm like, I, 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 sort of, I sort of let go after a while. Things got so insane, I was like, I can't predict anything anymore. And I, I don't mean that in a cynical way, I mean that in sort of like, I don't have the, the, the wisdom. You know? Yes. Hi, friend. Hi. I'm a huge, like, Kirby Enthusiasm fan. Yeah. Uh, you have my favorite episode with the placard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was just kind of curious, like, what was your motivation, or where did you get the idea for that character and that episode? Well, they came up with it, and um, I'm actually a fan of, like, walkers, and I just like them. And I feel like, um, as we punks, I'm gonna call us all punks, as we all get older, I'm like, where, when are we gonna start making some good punk rock walkers? Yes, always drums. What was the set that you loved since you knew me like when I did take You mean a drum kit? Um, it's when I bought timbales. Like, you know timbales, like the uh, Cuban sort of metal drums? It's when I bought those and I put them with my drum kit that I okay, sure. thought I could have a, a kind of a voice. Where I was like, oh, we gotta incorporate. I mean, I stole the idea from Bow Wow Wow. I don't know if you remember the band Bow Wow Wow. 
but someone, when I got to Molly's, I was like, oh, I think you can try it. You know, drum kits can be, and there can be variations that give you a sort of voice. Oh. <laughs> Most memorable shows I saw, so let's, let's say, of course, Diva, but I saw Talking Heads, and that was great. Um, I saw The Clash. I wish I got to see Lou Reed. I wish. I wish Prince, uh, but a little later. So Prince, I got to see on the um, parade tour. So that was, that was incredible. Oh, thank you. Hi, Prince. I made this for you. Oh, thank you. Oh, thank you. And potatoes. It's a potato with the Devo hat of the bird. Yes. Got a question to do with the back also. Okay. Sure. What are your thoughts on Margaret Thatcher? You know, like, she's not to be laughed at, right? What she do, she do a job, right? That's what she's here for. So I like her a lot. Good for her. I um, watch Easy A all the time when I'm just feeling really depressed. Yeah. And I absolutely love Easy A. I love you, and I love Amistad. I love you, and uh, that was a fun movie to work on. It really was. I think I did. I know I said I love you back. Uh, you had a question. And I love Emma Stone. She's great. Yeah, okay. Yes. You used to be in a band called Trench Mouth. Is yes, that I was. Yeah. So I've been telling people for years. I lived in Milwaukee in 1989. Mm -hmm. And I was like, you know, I think I saw Fred Armisen's band, Trench yeah. Mouth in Milwaukee. I kind of worded and like, maybe you guys played in my basement. Or it was so little. Day, you're in the house. It was something Am small. Am I crazy? Or no, you're not crazy. I can keep telling the story. We live in Chicago, and somehow we only we played Madison a lot, but Milwaukee only once. Okay. And, and we did play there. Uh, but we, yeah, we spent a lot of time in Wisconsin, and we did come to Cleveland, and we played the Rob Shop. I remember that. Yeah. Yeah. No, 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 you're telling the truth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, awesome. Yeah, you've got my, yes, you've got my blessing. Yeah. <laughs> right here. Yes. Uh, oh, over here. Oh, over here. <laughs> oh, there you are. Uh, yeah, uh, so big fan of yours, and I know you're mostly a comedian. Uh, that's your, your genre. Um, what are your other favorite genres, or what's the kind of film that you would love to work on, or a series, like horror, drama, or anything else? I want to do something like in another country in another language, like in Icelandic, <laughs> as an Icelandic person, and not as a gimmick. So like if you watch it, you're like, that's Fred, I think. Something like that where, yeah, that's, that's my hope. But like camouflage, not like, hey, I'm doing this thing, more like, I think that's him. Uh, Fred, I've got, I've got a question for you. Yes. Uh, a lot of us remember what it was like hearing Devo for the first time and there being an instantaneous connection. What was your journey into Devo like? So, this is an easy one to answer. First time I saw them was on a show called Friday. Yeah. And they played Curly One. And this is like 1980, so in my high school or junior high school, a lot of jean jackets and kind of, nothing against jean jackets, I'm just saying, like, a lot of sort of like long hair. And when I saw Devo, that, all, that, all that other kind of rock and roll was very um, accepted as normal with parents. It's like, oh yeah, they all knew what rock and roll was. But Devo was truly shocking to my parents. They'd be like, what, what, I can't figure this out. And that performance really spoke to me. I, I couldn't believe what I was seeing, they were like all uniform, they had the hats on, and they, they were in front of these lights, you know, those like panel lights? And everything about it, to this day, like that set me off. From that day, I remember I was just watching on TV, it was almost like my TV was broken or something. I was like, what is this? That set me on this path to where I am now. So early, early one, early one, couldn't believe it. 
Um, so my favorite SNL sketch is the mm, what you say. If you had to replace the mm, what you say with a Devo song, which one would it be? Oh. To add the most comedic effect. Beautiful world. I think beautiful world because it's, it has like a, a bit of a real emotion in it. I would I would go in there somewhere. Yeah. That was a, I can't believe you remember that sketch. That was that was crazy. <laughs> Yes, we'll be shooting more or less of Spookies in early 2022. We got shut down because of the pandemic, and we shoot it in Chile, in Santiago. Yeah. Oh. Oh. What? <laughs> <laughs> Two more, okay. There's one here. Okay. Right. Hey, uh, Fred, you and uh, Carrie Brown Senior are like uh, an amazing comedic duo in Portlandia. Uh, but I wonder, has she ever asked you to play drums with one of her bands? And would you do it if she asked you? We've like jammed. And also on some Portlandia like soundtrack stuff, we've kind of we played some of the incidental music. And then recently, um, Cedar Kitty played in Chicago and I played tambourine. I know. <laughs> Uh, what? Pardon me? Anyway, so yeah, but we've, we've played some music together. Yeah. Yes. How did the um, busking with Kevin Sullivan come to you? I'm a huge damn fan. And, uh, have you guys ever seen the damn live? Yeah! Am I crazy or are they huge? Every time you'll see them, not people going crazy. I'm like, Every show I've seen them, it's always like they really kill it. Passionate, and they all look great. They really look great. And um, Captain, it's incredible. Um, but um, Captain, I just, I just stayed in touch with, and I think we had to do something for Amoeba. And we just ended up like just busking in front. Like I think that was like, it was like for Amoeba Records, this record store. Yes. He's asking about Desert Days Surfboard, yeah? I was in a surfboard video, yeah. Yeah, I love that band a whole lot. They're, they got so much, they're really incredible, yeah. Incredible band. Yes. All right. Thank you, Fred. Thank you all very much.